coming to this um, worship seminar. Uh, this is a uh, very strategic and important time for us at New Life. And um, I wanted to open up uh, today. Uh, first four rows, please come on up front. There's room there if you want to. First four rows. First four rows. That's row five. Yeah, come into the rows. There you go. Um, I wanted to open it up as the shepherd for the house, as the primary worship leader in terms of the overall. Um, welcome. Come on into the first four rows, please. One of, there's chairs up front here if you need. Uh, before I even start talking, let's take a moment and pray. Father, I thank you with all of my heart for what you have done among us and over these years, how you've knit us together as a family. Lord, we're more than a group and even more than a team. We're a, we're a family called in like gifting to serve you and to help one another as we do that. So Lord, in this day, as we uh, prepare our hearts, as we set a high water mark, Lord, with a desire to honor you. Um, I pray understanding would be very clear that your anointing would just orchestrate our time together and that way the outcome would be perfect and bring you honor. And we ask it for your name. Amen. Well, again, welcome. Um, worship is one of the most vital aspects of what we do as a family here as an individual, we are worshipers, but uh, the worship of the family and the ministry is specifically a dynamic tool, and Karen will reference that more when she shares in a little bit. Um, it's not an adjunct or a tag-on to the end of your life if you're part of our worship ministry. If you treat it as that, you probably shouldn't be here. Pause for effect. Let me say it again because I want everybody to hear it. If worship is just sort of an add-on to your uh, list of club things that you do, you probably shouldn't be a part of the worship team at New Life. You might hear that a few times today. Not with a, not with a mean heart. But I, today, if anything is going to be clear, I want it to be clear that we're being called to a higher watermark, a higher mark of honor in what we do with this ministry and our calling toward this ministry. Um, I want to take care of a couple of very important things. Um, one, uh, through the Lord's promotion, through Holy Spirit leading, uh, I have welcomed and invited Karen Shoemaker to be our primary worship leader. Um, come on up, Bernardo. Come on up to the front. Thanks. Um, it's very significant. Roles are not giving, given out of... Uh, I'd like everybody to be listening, please. I don't want any chit-chat unless you're talking about what we're talking about. This is a very, very important day. Um, appointment, as it should be in the kingdom, should be about God's determinations. Does that make sense? It shouldn't be man's favoritism. I, I, I loathe that, actually. Partiality or playing favorites with one another. We all enjoy different people more than, than others, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to appointment for ministry and God's positioning that should be his heart so when I say that it's that Karen is taking this position it's because I sensed a long time ago in my heart that this should happen through the Holy Spirit and I know that many of you can affirm that by what you sense in your hearts um, um, some of you may be wondering where Christina is uh, with blessing and warmth of relationship Christina has gone to pursue what she feels in her heart to do with some relationships with some people she grew up with in another church gathering and we speak blessing over her She's a wonderful girl, and we just pray that the Lord fulfill everything in her heart and her life, but there's no conflict over that, okay? So you can dismiss that idea if you've been wondering. Um, what's one of the things we enjoy very much in our church is, an, an ex I, I believe, an extremely healthy um, environment of, and relationship. And the, I don't think it matters in many more places more than it does amongst the worshipers. Um, so... I want to emphasize that. And I'm going to take just a few minutes perhaps saying things that you've heard me say before, but I want you to hear it with a fresh set of ears. I've asked the Holy Spirit to give you anointing in how you hear what we say today. Um, 
In fact, I would like to ask the question of you. What is our, there are really two expressions of what we do as worshipers on this team. Can anybody tell me what those two things are? Give me one of them if you want. Hand up, we need a microphone for it. Uh, pick a hand, I don't, any, go ahead, any hand. Uh, I believe that our primary We need to lose the echo, thank you. Is to channel God's presence so that the people can feel God. We are a vessel through which God moves. You're in the right time zone. I'm going to ask you to change the word channel. But you're definitely where I want you to be with this. And I'll, Anybody else want to add to that? Go ahead, Tammy. I see it as worship is not about us. It's for him. It it's certainly for is. Jesus. certainly is about him. I feel the worship, it's a lifestyle for everybody. Who's Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Worship is not a moment here. Pam, did you want to say something? Pass it in to Pam. What, what you do in worship is not just what you do when you walk inside the walls here. Go ahead. It's to touch the heart of God and express our love and praise and appreciation to him and to show the congregation how to do it. Excellent. You're all in the time zone. You're all dancing around what I want to be heard right now. And those answers are all fitting in. Let me make it as succinct as I can. Bernardo, you like to comment? Yeah. Microphone, please. I just want to say something that the Bible says that we were created to worship the Lord. Uh, yes, we were. <laughs> Absolutely. Karen might hit on that when she talks. Let me say it to you as, as clearly and simply as I can put it. Number one, the first goal above every other goal in worship is to give to God what he is worthy of. Worship, in its purest definition, is recognizing God for who he is. If he had never done a thing for you, he deserves to be worshipped. He's holy, he's perfect, he's pure. He's, he's just, there is no other God. And he deserves that from us, his creation. Secondly, praise, and that, not the second item, but I'm defining worship from praise. Praise is giving thanks to God for what he's done. See the difference? Worship and praise, and we do both of it in what we do here. And he's done so much for everyone in this room, yes? Yeah. Secondly, and I believe a goal that you must never lose sight of, these two, it's for God first. Secondly, what we do is we help people to awaken. I'm replacing channel, okay? We help people to awaken to the presence of God. Um, we can turn off that projector, please. It's making a buzzing noise. We just need to turn it right off. Um, I'll let you take that last seat since you have a little one with you. Our job is so important, folks. What we do when we walk through these doors or when we do it at the beach or when we do it in the homes or wherever we are in our role as worshipers is to lead people to awaken because we're already awake or aware of God's presence. He's with us all the time. But people are not always aware of his presence. As worshipers, we should be there before anybody else in the building, anybody else around us where we're ministering. And I say that to you because it's not optional. I'm not talking about your emotions. Your emotions can play games with you. I'm talking about a deliberate choice in your life to be a worshiper, a person who is always mindful of God's presence in your life in what you say, in what you do, in how you think, that you're a person of his presence. You've heard me use that phrase, we're a people of the presence. Worshippers first and foremost, because by way of example and ministry, we lead people to that awakening moment in their lives where they recognize God is here. If we lose sight of that, our worship is at risk of becoming an entertainment or an opportunity for you to show off how good you are at something. And that will never be acceptable here. And many of you have wonderful talents and, and then God has given them and he will honor you and he'll bless you because of it. But the moment it becomes about you, you have compromised everything precious, not just for yourself, but for everybody who's involved in worship from here all the way back to the technology. So you must determine in your heart if you're truly committed to and willing to live your life in that position. Not perfect, none of us are. 
but committed to be a worshiper by your lifestyle, by what you say, think, do, here, but anywhere. I want to say this before I um, have Karen step in to uh, speak a little bit about worship. And I've thought about this moment for a lot of weeks. Uh, most of you have been around for quite some time on the worship team, whether it's the youth team or the adult team. Uh, we are the same team, by the way. Youth and young adults, you are us, we are you. I don't think there's a lesser team. There's no such thing. What I wanted to say and what I feel Holy Spirit has allowed me to say is we've been preparing you for months to say we are coming to a higher standard, calling all of us, me, you, all of us, to a higher standard of how we live and do our worship ministry. And we've done it with gentle warnings, uh, gentle encouragements, and sometimes not so gentle. Today is a change day. Today is a paradigm shift. That means that things after today will not be like they were yesterday. Um, what's amnesty mean? Am, no, amnesty. Pardon, thank you. Amnesty is a forgiveness. Everyone in this room has a total amnesty for everything that's happened up to this point. Does that feel good? <laughs> well, it should. I'm talking about in relation to the worship ministry. That should feel good. Yeah, forget about it. Good. Uh, there's no strikes against anybody in this room. It, and I mean that with all of my heart. Uh, it's not about trying to cum accumulate strikes anyway. It's about us being called to that higher place and recognizing it. So whatever has been done or happened as of this moment is wiped away. I want everybody to start when you end this seminar with a brand new slate. Of course, that's the heart of Christ anyway, yeah? Amen. All right. And I hope that not one member of this team decides at the end of this day that you will not step forward and continue to serve with us. But that option will be on the plate because every one of you are valued Every one of you are precious. Every one of you have giftings and callings that I, I recognize as your pastor and appreciate deeply with all my heart. So if that leaves a little bit of an ominous note in your heart, then that's exactly what I intended it to do. I want you to be sober about how important it is to be involved with this ministry. And from this day on, there will be a higher standard that we call you to and hold you accountable for. Karen. Good morning. Morning. Um, to say that I'm very excited about what God's moving me into would be not very good words to say because I'm overwhelmed um, at what he's doing and what he's going to do in our midst. I spent a lot of time with him last night um, not sleeping and he showed me He showed me this beautiful lace tablecloth and it had a cross in it and he said you all will be dining at my table and he meant that for the worship team he has some great things for us as we go forward and I'm so glad the way the pastor just stated about a new start it always feels good to have a new start right I wanted to, I really felt in my heart I needed to share a little bit about the power of praise and worship. We all know the story about Paul and Silas, right? But I think sometimes we just hear the story and we don't really let it sink in and think about it, really. Paul and Silas were arrested for casting out a demon, right? That's a good thing, wouldn't you think? It absolutely is a good thing. They were beaten, they were thrown in jail. They were shackled. Now think about this. I've seen a couple of movies lately that are true stories that people have gone through similar things like this in our world today. Can you imagine as they were in the prison, the smell, the stench? Can you imagine the atmosphere? It couldn't have been a happy atmosphere, could it have? They were hear hearing people wailing and crying because they were getting beaten and being mistreated. It wasn't an atmosphere that anybody would have wanted to be in. I would have pretty much say it was very depressing, wouldn't you? And if we really allow ourselves to think about what they went through that day, 
it changes everything. And I've been a Christian most of my life. And, and as I've been studying this, it's just come to life even more. Then, what happened? They suddenly decided to place their focus on what? On God. They knew that they couldn't do anything about that circumstance going on. It was beyond their control to do anything about it, right? And they began to pray, and they began to seek seek God. And as they did that, then they began to do what? They began to sing and praise and worship. Can you imagine the atmosphere at that point? And all these prisoners that had been sitting there in in shackles and chains all this time, and, and they'd been so depressed, and they just felt so hopeless, and suddenly, there was a suddenly, the atmosphere changed. Different meaning today, isn't it? The atmosphere changed. Had a very, not a similar situation, and I'm not going to share. I don't want to give the enemy any credit for anything, but I went through a very devastating situation in my life a year ago last month. And to many people, they would have crumbled if they didn't have Jesus. It was that severe. When it happened and I got that phone call in the car, I, I cried out to God just like this. And I said, God, what? Why? What, what's going on here? And he immediately spoke to my spirit and said, all things work together for good. And I held on to that through the next four months of one of the most horrible, horrific times of my 62 years. It was that severe. And I decided... I came and saw the pastor immediately, and I decided I was leading worship. This was a Friday. I was leading worship that Sunday, and I decided you are not going to get the best of me, enemy. I'm going to go into the battle. I am going to go into the battle with my worship. I am going to count on you, God, because you've already told me all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. You've got this situation in your hand, and I'm just going to keep declaring your word, and I'm going to sing your words, and I'm going to shout your words, and I'm going to worship your words. And he brought me through, and he brought the situation through, just like what he did for Paul and Silas. Have you ever felt like you were in shackles and you were in chains? Have you ever had circumstances in your life? that you've been trusting God for for years, they haven't happened yet, but do you stop? Do you stop believing? Do you stop trusting? Do you stop worshiping? Do you stop praising? Of course not. You become defeated foes at that point. It's a choice. Olga, I loved what you said. It's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle that you choose and determine to do, no matter what's going on in your life. Through praise and worship, their hearts were raised into joyous presence and the peace of God. You want peace? Worship. This provided God a channel for his power to operate in their circumstances. Did you hear that? It supplied a channel. Can God really work when you're all depressed, curled up into a ball? Well, I guess he could, but you're not giving him much to work with, are you? It's called living by faith. And it's not easy sometimes. I've been doing it a long time, but it's not easy. It's really not sometimes. Come on, who, who will agree with that? It's a choice you make. It's a choice you make. The Bible says where two or more are gathered, what? He's in the midst. So if just even Pastor Randy and I are standing up there, he's in the midst. And he's in the midst when we have the whole team up here. And we need, the the one thing that God has spoken to me over and over again since the promotion in November was, the team must become one. The team must become one. I don't even know how many times he's told me that. So I'm asking him for his direction for us to become one. What do you think that means? We all can hear the voice of God. And we can all know his direction. 
Pastor and I have been doing this together for quite some time now. We know, we, we know the heartbeat. We almost know what each other's going to do next and think next. That's because we've become one in the spirit. Does that make sense? Okay. Praise. Praise means to commend, applaud, to magnify. For the Christian, praise to God is an expression of worship, lifting up, and glorifying the Lord. We humble ourselves, and our attention needs to be on God. You walk in here, I would love nothing better, and I've said this to the pastor many times, I would love nothing better for people to park their car and almost run to get in to start worshiping. That they wouldn't stop in there. Maybe to say hi. and But I've got to get into the presence of God. I've got to get into the presence of God. And that is my heart. And I know one day we will see that. Amen. I went to a church in Leesburg, Florida. Where I was part of a worship team. And um, there were many, many times that I wasn't on the team. That I was the only one that left my seat and I was up front worshiping. I was the only one, and it was a bigger church than this. But God said, Karen, you go. I'm sending you. Go. Do not look at what anybody else is doing. Do not think about anybody else. Your focus needs to be on me. I want you up there. And that was for months. I was the only one. But I'm going to tell you, I grew more spiritually in that length of time than I ever had. Because I was being obedient to God and I was getting into his presence and there was many times I knelt at the throne of God and I couldn't even get up to go back to my seat when the preacher started but he knew me and he knew my heart he knew my heart was after the Lord we've got to stop being afraid you might begin to shake under the presence of God you might begin to laugh you we've had it here we cannot worry about what others think as long as we're in the spirit. That's the key here. As long as you're in the spirit and you're not doing something within yourself. And your focus is what we just said on God. Praise should be entered, mingled with our daily prayer life, our daily Bible reading. It should be, praise should be our lifestyle. And that was, you stole some of my, what I, the Lord gave me, Olga. And, I, and that's another confirmation as the pastor has shared with me. It matters how we act when we're outside of these walls. It matters. There are hurting people out there. God has had a young lady in my life that works with me. That is so far, she thinks she's okay. She's so far out in left field. She doesn't know what she's hitting. I ask her to church all the time. I witness to her all the time. It matters how we act. We go into a restaurant. It matters how you act. The pastor always says what to us when we leave practice? Guard your anointing. What do you think that means? You have the microphone. What does guard your anointing mean? Anybody can share. What does guard, what does guard your anointing mean? Um, it means to protect yourself from things that may happen between that day and the next day and um, keeping your, your mind and heart focused on Christ. And his ways. And his ways, yes. Exactly right. And his ways. So you walk out of here and um, you get into a big fight with your husband or your wife. You walk out of here, you get into a, uh, you go into a restaurant and uh, you didn't get waited on quick enough. You get an attitude. Like, I'm all that in a bag of chips. Don't you know I'm sitting here? Or you go in. I know, Larry and I know more people because we eat out quite a bit. And I eat out every day for lunch. Everybody knows me at the restaurants. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. I want to say something about yes. the anointing before you go further. Yes, sir. Anointing is God's working through you. That's a good definition of anointing. It's him manifesting through you, whether in the singing, the playing, 
teaching, preaching. That's what anointing is. So it's protecting that awareness, responsiveness that you have to God's wanting to work through you. When you soil that, when you infect it with attitude and actions or someone tries to do that to you, I'm asking you to guard it and say, don't let that happen. I will not allow somebody to take me to a place where the main thing in my heart now is that conflict or that compromise. Guarding the anointing is guarding that place where you're responsive to him working in you and through you. And getting it under the blood if we've messed up immediately. Yes. Absolutely. Praise sends the enemy running. That Sunday I chose to walk in here and worship through this horrific circumstance. Sent the enemy running. And he gave me so many more words after that whole scenario that I went through was very difficult, but one of the best growing times of my life with the Lord. And I saw his faithfulness. And he told me, I'm above all things. And I declared the words he gave me. And that's what we're doing up here. We're not standing up here singing a bunch of songs. We, sh we might as well sit down if that's what we're doing. You'll hear me when I'm leading. Let's declare it. Let's declare it. Let's declare it. Get it in the atmosphere. You might wonder what I'm doing sometimes when I'm walking back and forth here. And I don't do that as often anymore because I believe the ground has gotten more fertile. But God told me a long time ago. That had to look really strange to a lot of people. But he said, you go down. You go down. I want you going back and forth. It's almost like tilling the, the land, if you will. And people will start coming. And what has happened? Mm -hmm. Even on Wednesday nights, Pastor. We had a lot of people down here Wednesday night. So every once in a while, he'll still have me do that when I can feel and I can sense that there's a lot that people have brought in and it's just not breaking through yet. And he'll tell me to go down. So you might have wondered why I did that. That's why. So remember that. You want the enemy gone? Praise. It'll send him running. One last thing I want to share. Love the story of Jehoshaphat. Love the story of Jehoshaphat. He was just surrounded. And there was no way by all these armies that he was going to ever be able to win anything, right? What was the first thing he did? He sought God. That's what the scripture, I just read it again last night. He sought God. And God told him to go before the army with what? Praise. Singing praises to the Lord. Now that's kind of, uh, sounds a little odd, doesn't it? You've got all these other armies that are getting ready to come against you. And you're going to start going down the land praising. Guess what? They won the battle, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And they picked up all that was left of the spoil. He knew that he had to get to God. He knew he had to, to get to God for the answer for his circumstance. And he knew that praise would bring them out. And I could spend a lot of time teaching on that. I, I've done that before, and I love that story. But, and, and for the sake of time, the most important thing was that they went to battle, just like I did that Sunday morning with praise and worship. And guess what? It changed the atmosphere. Did you get both stories? It changed the atmosphere. Yes. So what we do changes the atmosphere. If we're doing it in the right mind, the right reason. If we're not standing up there for ourselves, but we are truly coming in, like I said, and, and I can't wait to get up there because I want to be in the presence of God. There's no better place to be. I have sat over there before when I first started the church, and that's been six years ago. And I, I smelled this aroma, and I thought, I've never smelled that before. I've smelled it about three times since. It's the presence of God. 
Did you? And Saturday night, Pastor Hope smelled it. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're going to see such growth if we all become one. Everybody sitting in this room is an important, integral part of that. Whether you are on the youth ministry team, whether you're on the adult ministry team, whether you're on the dance team, everybody is an intricate part of this process. And that's why today we come and ask you for the commitment that we will be asking you for after, we're, after in a few minutes. So again, I encourage you to live the lifestyle, to guard the anointing, to know why you're up here, and that's going to actually lead us to my next thing I wanted to bring up before I pass the guidelines out to you. What does it, and I want answers, what does it mean to you to be on the worship team or the dance team? I want answers. I want you to think about it for a second. I want personally for you to think about it. Why are you here? Why are you doing it? And then I would like some of you to share your answers, please. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to, to God for, for what he's done for me. And uh, then I guess side by side with that, I feel it's an obligation. If I'm going to serve him, and he's blessed me with uh, certain talents, whether singing or, or playing or whatever, I feel an obligation to give that talent back to him. Thank you, Sam. Janice. Oh, okay. For me, is an appreciation for all the things he has done it to me. He changed my life and the blessing I've been receiving Thank you. all this year. Yes. I want to give the best from me to him. Thank you. Thank you. For me, it's joy. The joy of the Lord. And I don't say that just as a, a, a quote from scripture. Uh, for many years, I wondered where the joy was. That's where it is. And then sometimes, it's simply prayer. It is the way I pray. Very good. For me, it's an honor, a privilege to play for him. Oh, go ahead. Uh, for me, it means everything I mean I love him I I have to do it it's it's a lifestyle it's my life and it's the way I thank him for what he has done it's the way I go through things he gives me strength he gives me joy when I do that and and I love his presence so it's love everything. being in his presence Naomi? there's an expression in my spirit that is beyond words and beyond anything that I could possibly create or imagine that I want to express in gratitude that only happens when I am actually functioning as a worshiper and without worship and me music and playing instruments but praising the Lord it's, it's like my life is missing the most important part of it my reason for living, actually, really wanting to live. Awesome, thank you very much. Want some more? What well, what Sam said was, you know, it's your obligation. It's what you, it's your gratitude. What you're meant to do, but it's the anointing comes on you, and it's like this is what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to praise Him. You don't feel as alive as when you're up there um, and it's not for you it's not you know what you can do it's because that's what you're meant to do what you were created to do to praise him to worship him it's whatever your talent is that's why he gave that to you was to use it to praise him to worship him and to bring other people into that place of worship that's why he gave you whatever talent it is 
And that's why you do it. Yes, thank you, Ken. Why I do it. Thank you, Ken. Go ahead, Hope. I want my whole life to be about giving him glory, bringing him glory. And um, that is just one expression of it. Uh, when you're worshiping him, uh, I try, I do it with everything in me because I want them to see how much I love him. And, um, you know, he's called me to do it. And so it's, it's a matter of obedience as well. You know, when he gives you a gift, he expects you to use it for his kingdom and his glory. And uh, it's been an honor and privilege for me for years. I still stand amazed that he even would use me that way. But th it's all about bringing him glory. Absolutely. Thank you, Kim. Yes. Um, you said something, rush into the sanctuary to praise. And I've been black at that. I'd, but uh, I was. I wanted to talk about the nursing home and the beach when we're singing and playing, and we see somebody out there that we see their lives change right before our eyes. That's what I think worship is, as much as you know, praising Him, but bringing others to see Him through us. Very good. Very good. Well, to me, it's an opportunity, or not to, an opportunity to work for Him opportunity to be used by him because we have options and um, when you choose you know to work for God or when you choose to do something for God not because you're obligated to because you want to by default you feel thankful because you're working for the man that made everything yeah. why work for anybody else even yourself. Amen. You don't know anything compared to God, really. No? Good. Very good. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes. I I see it as a as a burden. Um and not obviously not the bad type of burden, but as a burden to worship Christ through what he's got me through. Um and just I know I can never pay it all back, but I want to try to. Um and so I see it as I'm, I have this burden to worship him, but it's a paradox because he releases my burden. Um, don't really understand it, but it's just a place where I can say, <sighs> kind of thing, you know, just let it all go. Good. That's very good. Oh, we have some more. Okay. To me, like Naomi said, it's hard to explain, but um, when I'm there, even though I don't know much about music, notes, or singing, be in his presence is just a transformation from the body to the spirit. It's, 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 um, the whole place here is not any more physical. It's uh, his peer and, and bring up just him and me. So that helps me knowing that he is for me because when I am in his presence, everything is taken care of. So I am for what I've been creating for and I am living and doing, not only in this place. I'm here obviously with, uh, it's a moment, two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever. But when we go out, he plays something on me that I feel well, it's not a feeling, but it's a carry, something with me that I give it away as I go out in this environment of um, holiness, you know, set apart from the world. Right. Um, and I felt like, uh, like he said, an obligation, since I am a vessel, to give it away. So by coming back and forth and, and going, my praise is coming to him, and then he gives me back. So it's... Um, like a ring, like a, what is a the funnel. song? The wheel. Oh, there's a wheel within a wheel. Yes. So to me, it's kind of like that. I give it to him, he give it back to me. So I, I am in a position to give it away as I go and approach to people and uh, protect me at the same time for many things that, um, so it's, it's hard. It's hard to explain and, and 
So, but I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> yes, I know you do, and thank you. Thank Hello, you very much. Anyway, praise him. <laughs> oh, um, Pastor, Ho oh, okay, Olga, go ahead. I think it's a most pleasant experience and, your na and, it and the earth our spirit can feel. And it's like not like just we give the worship, it's what we receive from God. And when you, you spiritually feel like the walls fall down and the mountains went away, and it's the most of the time when I get through yeah. things. It helps only you get through things. Only yes. through this. Yes. I I don't even know, not even from um, through the prayer, but through the worship. Yes. Next one up here. As it's coming. As it's coming. If the things that are being said here, if you haven't resonated or haven't said, yeah, I, I have some of that too. Maybe not every single thing that's said, but if, you, if you're not identifying with anything that's said here, it's probably telling you that you're not involved in the right ministry. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if you're built to be a worshiper, these truths being spoken should it be it'd be like uh, uh, strumming down over all my strings they're going to resonate because they were touched that's what should be happening to you right now i don't play an instrument or do the dancing or sing i do sing in the congregation i make a sounds anyway <coughs> i find that uh, coming into the sanctuary <coughs> especially coming up front coming forward and the anointing is uh, powerful. And we, we all need to be worshipers, whether we're on the team or not. And even when you're not scheduled for the team, you need to be worshiping and receiving. And uh, so it's a need that we have. We are really going to be missing out if we're not worshiping for ourselves. I find coming into the anointing, sometimes I'm not aware of how burdened down I am, and maybe it's with other people's cares, or things I've rubbed up against in the world. You get things on you, and sometimes it may not be so significant that you're aware of it. I find I come into the anointing, I start worshiping, and things just fall off. The anointing breaks off the bondage. It breaks off things that we might not even be aware of, and all of a sudden your spirit, you're, you're lighter, you're more triumphant, more victorious. And it's just by being in that uh, anointing, uh, connecting with it and allowing it to do it. But uh, that's worship, just being in that atmosphere and allowing the, the Lord to do that. I can't imagine how much heavier um, it would be if we never ever got these things just falling off of us. Just coming forward, I find, it could be a bit of worry or fear or sadness or whatever you've been running into that week that might even be coming from other people. And I can't imagine not worshiping and taking care of all those things and, and getting them all broken off. And the, the atmosphere is here. People walk in here and they feel the presence of the Lord, which leads us into worship without any effort. You just come in and you just because it's been prepared Saturday night, Sunday, uh, Saturday morning, and, and uh, y you prepare the way for the rest of us, but we all have to worship. Yes. Anybody else? Or, so I want to ask you something, now that you've mostly shared, a lot of you have shared. When you're on the team, when you're not on the team, when you walk in the back door, what is your motivation? What are you here for? Are you coming with that heart that you can't wait to get into the presence of God? Or are you not? I'm asking. I, I mean, you don't have to tell me. I want you to think about this. This is very serious. What is your motivation? And that's between you and God. Yes, absolutely. You hit it, you hit it really well. Um, well, I believe we're all called here because we're all called to be worship leaders, not just worshipers. 
worshipers and worship leaders. And so when I'm not on the team, I'm still a worship leader. And so I should, because I call, I'm called to be a worship leader, wherever I am, I should be leading worship. There are people that come in this church every Sunday with all kinds of things on them and with uh, don't know anything about worship don't know the first thing about worship or how to worship and when they come in and they see different people worshiping different ways even if they're not up there but down here they're lead and they're going well I can relate to that guy and I can relate to that kind of worship and so we're always worship leaders no matter where we are whether on the platform or down here or in the congregation and we need to lead worship all the time. Absolutely. Thank you. Well said. That was very well said. Oh, Don wants to say something. I can't stand it. I, 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 well, no, I that's, I, that's... I can't stand it. I'm, this is all what the I, Holy I'm, Spirit I'm, said to, so we're doing what he said to do. Uh, <laughs> the most precious assignment God has ever given me is to bring people into his presence. I am so honored be a part of this group I can't I can't even express it I thank God for for the opportunity for the pleasure whether it's uh, on Sunday morning or or Saturday night I tell you there's nothing like Saturday night around here <laughs> yeah, it's incredible I mean the power of the Lord just drips off the ceiling in here on Saturday night probably about four or five people in here but it's alive or two or more agree but I am so grateful, so honored. And I, I, I thank you. This is good. Keep going. I was trying to be quiet, but I'm okay. not. Okay. <laughs> I think that gift of worship, um, and we're worshiping here, and we're showing people how to lead, it reminds us, because there are times you're in circumstances you can't even get the words out. The words are not there. You're unable to even think. And there's been several times in my lives when all I could do, and I mean, I'm saying all I can do, but it was what I needed to do is I just start singing scriptures. I have one of those people who I, I memorize by singing the word. And I've always done it. And I, sometimes you are so overwhelmed, and it was been at work, it's been in my home, that you cannot get past it. But God's given you that wonderful spirit that he knows. And all you have to do is start singing his word. Yes. And you sing his word. And it changes the atmosphere. And then you can speak again. And, and, exp and he knows what you, and sometimes, but you need to explain it. But that release that we get when we sing, there is, there's nothing beyond that. Because we're giving him the praise yes. that he deserves. But see, you made a choice to do that. That's the key. Paul and Silas, Jehoshaphat, but they made a choice. It's a choice that we have that we can either do or not to. And it can change the atmosphere or not change it. Do you have something? Praise and worship is so important to me because I, I would say I'm addicted to his presence. I'm addicted to it. I, I couldn't stay away from it if I tried. But it, it's the most beautiful thing in my life. And I can be doing something that um, the world would think was great. I can be out on my own boat, you know, picnicking and just laying back in a, in a, a gravity chair. And I'm, I'm laying there and I'm going, I wish I was at church singing. You know, I would rather be here praising than anywhere doing anything. And I'm just addicted to his presence. And there is a difference between praising God at home or by yourself. There's a difference when it becomes corporate praise. It takes you to another level and you feel like a part of a mighty team taking the church before the throne of God exactly. into his presence and bringing, you know, his presence into the church. 
I'm, you, you can be the last one, and I'm going to speak, and then we'll transfer into the next stage. Like, like the pastor said, that everything that's being spoken should resound with you. I, I feel like a, l every, a little bit of everybody, that, uh, and um, that it, it just seems natural. You know, I, I come from a family of worshipers, from a family of people singing, and it's all I've known all my life. I grew up with it. I grew, my parents joke around and say, we, we were born on the chairs of the church. We were raised on the, on the pews. And like she said, I couldn't get away from it if, if I tried. Everywhere you are, anything you hear, it, God's presence is there. And it, it resounds with me through singing. <coughs> like Ruth said, um, so to me, I guess the word would be it just it's natural, it, it's it's organic, it's it's a part of me. It's a it's who I am. I can't imagine not worshiping God. The it seems to me that m most, if not all, of you have a, a very healthy understanding of the. Um, the DNA of the presence of God and the powerful impact of that. That's what I hear you echoing as you talk. Now, at the risk of sounding like we're blowing our own horn, but that's not the purpose of this, guest after guest, missionary after missionary, speaker after speaker, even our, general, our district superintendent who was with us last week. W we get the privilege of sitting down for a meal afterwards with them. And they say to the person, without exception, you don't really know how rare it is to find this kind of welcoming of God's presence in today's church world. And I don't want to feel vain about that at all. What I want to feel is, Lord, I'm grateful that that's the truth of what's happening here, and I'm grieved in my heart that it's not as common in every other church in the land and would love to see that. And I want you to treasure. I want you to truly understand how precious this is, what God is doing here among us. And to know that people who do have firsthand encounters with many other types of worshiping backgrounds tell us that something very special is happening here let me point something out and i think most of you will understand it but i want it to be said very clearly we do not worship worship that would be a grave mistake we worship him and in that atmosphere we find life and that's the difference before we actually get into the worship team guidelines, um, the Lord gave me a couple of scriptures we all know, but again, we all knew Paul and Silas' story, but did you get something new out of it today? Um, uh, Pastor Mary asked me to do the role play for the kids, and it was so wonderful to do it. It opened um, like a lot of things in me, and it was so great when they were worshiping. Well and and Randy, they were in jail. It was it was great. Somebody's supposed to open the door of the jail because we did we made well. Pastor Mary made it. Somebody made it, and and then when we finished the whole thing, the guy come and tell me, I'm so sorry, I couldn't find the the thing to open the door, but it opened itself when they were pray, praising the Lord. It was so wonderful. I was so amazed because his presence was there in the role play. So the kids could see the whole thing. So it's awesome. That story. Yeah, I didn't say that part of the story, but everything opened up. Um, I said the part the Lord wanted me to, but that, thank you for adding that. Okay, Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus giving thanks through him to God the Father. So whatever we do, what are we supposed to do? Do it as is unto him, right? So that's why we're asking you today for your best. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. You will never please people, folks. 
I'm much older than most of you. You will never please people, even in a church. Am I right, Pastor Randy? <laughs> maybe maybe especially in a church. <laughs> <laughs> You'll always, somebody's always going to have an opinion. I ran an assisted living for 11 years. I had staff that knew they could do it better than me. I'm sure people in the church think they can do it better than you. <laughs> But that's not what Let God called you. us to do. He said, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Yeah. If we take that and we really think about that, it changes things. It changes the atmosphere. That's another Okay, God, I got it. We've got to change the atmosphere. Work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. Remember that the Lord will reward you, each of us, uh, each for the good we do, whether we are slaves or free. So, as we segue into our worship team guidelines that I'm getting ready to pass out, I'm going to ask that you not start reading it. I'm asking you to hold it. Did everybody get a pen? You will need one. Did everybody sign the sign-in sheet? There's a clipboard. If you didn't, you need to sign before you leave because there's accountability here today. I'm going to pass out the guidelines. Lamwell, do you mind? Thank you. Who didn't sign in needs to sign in. Okay. Please do not. Just turn it over. When you get the guidelines, just turn it over, and then you won't be tempted. We are going to... You will get a copy of the guidelines, and it is yours to keep. I encourage you to take one of these nice little pins that I bought, pass them around if you need one, and make yourself notes. Anybody else not signed in? Okay, yeah. great. Um, Pastor Randy and I are going to be do teaming on this and going through this with you line by line. We feel that that's uh, the fair thing to do so that we can, you can know what is expected. Pastor Randy, do you have one or do you need one? Uh, I need one. Lamb, well, if you could give Pastor one as well, please. Thank you. There should be plenty of them. Yeah, uh, we made 40 copies. Are we out of them already? Okay, everybody. Everybody have one? Everybody? And oh, let me put it this way. Does anybody not have one yet? Okay, now turn them over. Don't look at them. Okay. All right. Do you want to say anything at this point before we start? Okay, all right. So let's, you can flip it over now. Don't go ahead of me. Stay with me, please, because I want you to ask questions. This is the time to make sure that we're all on the same, that we're one, and we're in one in understanding, okay? So please ask questions if you're not sure about something. The description, Christian individuals operating as a ministry team to lead and encourage the congregation in praise and worship of God. The purpose of our ministry is your objective is to glorify, rec reflect, and represent God and to lead others to know the awakening, like the pastor said, to the presence of God through every action offered in worship. So our focus cannot be on us. Our focus has to be on Jesus. Okay? You would be up there for the wrong reason. If that's why you're up there. If you're up there because you think you've got a gorgeous voice and you're going to out sing everybody and you're going to sing as loud as you can because you know you're the best, you're up there for the wrong reason. Okay? I, want, I, can't, I have to comment. We, did, we decided we'd do this. We'd play off each other. <coughs> uh, example is very good when you're trying to understand something. Uh, the purpose, again, to glorify and reflect God the opposite of that would be what you just said. The opposite of that would be expressed in a lot of different things. If you decide, I'm going to wear this particular item of clothes because I know that people will recognize this or uh, pay attention to this, you stand out. If you stand out for any reason, if you stand out because your clothes is ratty or it doesn't fit right or it's gaudy, or it's drawing attention. It may be a $500 piece of clothes. 
and the world esteems it, but if it's drawing attention to you, it's not reflecting him. How about the clothing of your countenance? If you've had a rough week and a rough day, and you decide, I just have, and I'm, I, I don't feel like smiling, and, I, and I'm just going to be who I am. I'm going to be very honest. <laughs> I'm ticked off, and I'm not going to pretend I'm not. Then stay off of this platform. Humbly say, Pastor, my attitude needs to be fixed, and I can't get up here today. Could you please excuse me? And I will understand perfectly. It will not be a mark against you. It will be an, a, a mark toward you to, that you've recognized it, and you're just not really... Because you're going to draw attention. One person up there like this sours the whole atmosphere. So, and one person up there who's so giddy, so foolishly giddy and carrying on does the same thing. We're there and our countenance must be one that is determined to reflect his presence. Do you see what I'm saying? I could list 20 other things easily, but I won't. I'll stop there. And women, your dress is important. We should dress as godly women. And I won't go any further than that because we'll have one-on-one -on -one conversations if I, if I feel like I need to. We are godly women, and we need to dress. We are not a part of the world. It offends me to walk down the streets and have to look at some of the things I have to look at with women, the way they're dressed. We are godly women, and we should be set apart, and we should be dressed like godly women. I won't say any more about that. Okay, our, our ministry, Biblical Foundation, uh, we have some scripture there to sing 117 times, uh, and one of them is Psalms 98. Music, Psalms 105. Instruments and dance. It's all a vital part of the ministry. So let's get into the ministry-specific guidelines, our spiritual life. And I'm going to read it. I know you can read, but we're going to read it because I want you to stop me if you have any questions. All participants in the worship ministry must be born-again Christians actively, actively serving God in their day-to-day -day life, live an explanatory life before the family, your church, and the world. Now, are we going to mess up? We get it under the blood and we keep going. But I'll tell you, since I've been coming here, and every week I hear, guard your anointing, it stays with me all week. Ever since I've been coming here, I'm pretty old. <laughs> Ever since I've been coming here, and I've been a Christian since I was six years old, and the pastor has talked about uh, gossiping, and that if he hears it, he'll take care of it, I don't think I've gossiped since. I think I'm more fearful of Pastor Randy than I am God. <laughs> but that's a good thing. I chose to grow in that area. It's very easily to get into listening to somebody say something to you and you chime off and you go off. You've lost your anointing. Your focus isn't where it needs to be. That was free advice. Okay, just because I'm afraid of Pastor Randy. <laughs> um, okay. People will also be impacted by the areas in which you fail to display an honorable example of Christian living. I'm going to give you a quick example. We eat at Rib City a lot after church on Sunday. There's a group that goes there, and they probably have about 15 or 16 people there every Sunday. So the servers know us quite well. And they are the worst tippers in the whole restaurant. What do you think about that? It's shameful. It's horrible. We are set apart and different. That's just one example. Okay. This is very important. This is all important, but I want everybody to listen, please. Attendance. Be a regular attendee at New Life's services Sunday, midweek, and special ser meetings, except for health, employment, or emergencies dictate otherwise. Now, we understand that not everybody can come on Wednesday night because of jobs, because of children having to go to school. That's not what we're saying. But if you're not here on Wednesday nights, and you know what? My pastor was kind enough to me to one day say, you need to be here on Wednesday night. Is there anything keeping you here from coming on Wednesday night? That was years ago. 
Have I missed a Wednesday night since? I'm not too old to learn and grow. We need to be here. We are part of the worship team. And I don't know that I've ever felt any more of his great presence than Wednesday night when we were in pre-worship. It was awesome. And the teaching on Wednesday night has been awesome. I've grown and grown and grown. You know, during the Halloween season, he was teaching on things about that. And something so simple, I'm just sharing my heart here, something so simple, I get my toes done every three weeks. And I was going to Oriental places, and the first thing you walk into, you see Buddha, right? Guess what I'm not allowed to do anymore? (laughs) Because God convicted me. I went to a beautician that she was talking about making the dream catchers and she was talking about yoga and all these other things and the Lord said no you're finding somebody new it's that serious to me it's that serious to get those things cleaned out of your life so that we can become one the atmosphere can change and we usher in the presence of God like we've never seen before and you must be better equipped it's not about uh, better than in terms of I'm more important than. Right. But you must be better equipped than anybody else who's involved in ministry. Now, I don't know if everybody's agreeing with me. It's, I guess it's okay that you're not agreeing with me, but you need to decide to step out of the worship team. Yes. That's how serious we are about this. You, your life must be better equipped to serve the Lord with honor and clarity. Because you're always leading. Just what you said, Rich. You are always leading people. And if you're not fortified, if you're not in the Word, if you're not changing by the Word, you are a detriment. You're a weak part of what we are together. A weak link. And it's deadly for you and it's deadly for us and what we do. Unity and loyalty. You must maintain a healthy ability to work with others. Your loyalty and respect for those who are in leadership and for those who you minister with is absolutely essential. Any questions about that part? Commitment. All participants in the worship team ministry should display a clear commitment to New Life Church. It is required that all worship team members are either members of New Life Church or that they are actively pursuing church membership. This requirement has been both spiritual and legal impact on the strength of our ministry. I'm going to pause you for a second. And I'm going to jump back to the loyalty and unity. Um, It's easy to read past that one and not get what's being said. I have this talk that many of you here have heard. I call it the Randy talk. Um, I've got it from men and women who have served the Lord long before me. But what what I want to say in the smallest way, shortest way, and I need every eye looking at me this time. Everybody needs to understand this. What does it mean to be in unity and loyalty? It doesn't mean you're a rubber stamp. In fact, I need your uniqueness to help us be all that we can be. It doesn't mean you can't disagree with what we say as leaders. That uniqueness builds us and makes us better together. What it does mean is that if you have a point of disagreement, not battle, I, I absolutely refuse to allow battle amongst us. Um, everybody, everybody's attention, give somebody an elbow beside you, make sure they're all paying attention now because I'm going to make it sure that you know what I mean. Everybody get me? If you have a problem with me, Bernardo, stand up, brother. Turn toward me, sort of towards them and towards me. If Bernardo has a conflict with something that I'm doing as the leader, because he and I are brothers, hermano, is that it? Hermanos, if, yeah, if we are and we are, and he's upset, and I don't want him to pretend that he isn't bothered by it. I would like Bernardo to come to me and say, Pastor, can we sit down for a minute Um, inside of the office? Because this is nobody else's business. Are you listening to what I just said? It is nobody else's business that you have a problem with somebody else on this team, leader or not. Everybody got that? 
And he came to me because he loves me and he respects me. And he discusses it with me. And I say, oh man, I didn't realize that you saw it that way. Let's talk about that. And maybe I do need to change something. And he loved me enough to point that out and help me. Or maybe he just misunderstood something and now I have to help make it clear. But together we're brothers and we feel so much better because we took five minutes in the respectful private place to work it out. And tonight he's not going to sit there worrying. Why did he do that? Why did Pastor Randy say that? He's not going to be offended because we worked it out as brothers and there isn't an offense. That's what loyalty is. That's what unity is. Any exceptions to that will be treated very severely by me. Did I just threaten you? Yes. I did. As your pastor, I have zero tolerance for gossip. Amen. <laughs> I didn't catch your gossiping, by the way. It wasn't. I have zero tolerance for gossip, backbiting, griping about one another. Zero. The first time I find it happening, I will come to you in gentleness and love. The second time, not so gentle, still in love. And I'll probably remove you from the ministry. Because it is cancer to everything God wants us to do as a body of believers. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, commitment. Did, I think I read that. Yes, okay. Prayer. Team members should be in earnest prayer for God's working in every service. Our talents and skills become spiritually significant when we seek for God's anointing and submit to his leading. We should never come in here without being prepared. Always, you should be coming in to seek the presence of God and to get into praise and worship. And you are prepared for that. Practices. Okay, now I need to make sure everybody's listening. Responsible attendance is mandatory. Be on time and in place five minutes before practice begins. Practice begins at 8 o'clock, except on the third uh, Saturday, which is 9.30. So what time do you need to be here if it's at 8 o'clock? 7.55 and 9.25, Okay. It is understood that on a rare occasion, people need to miss a practice due to work or illness. If, a, if the vocalist cannot attend practice, it would be best that someone else take your spot that weekend. The occasional unavoidable absence will not disqualify you from ministry if you notify Karen. However, habitual absence com compromises your effectiveness on the team and it compromises the team's ability to minister in unity. Habitual absence is likely an indication that the ministry is not a good fit for you. So is habitually being late. Yes, absolutely. It tells me you don't value this enough. Yeah. I don't feel mean about it, but I am determined it, it, it ends today. It ends today. If something happens, you're on the way, the accident is in front of you and you're held up. Who, who in this group does not have a cell phone? Did I make my point clear? Karen should be on speed dial or at least easy to get to so you say, I'm on my way but I'm held up. Don't, just don't assume that it's okay. It's no longer going to be tolerated at all. If you have a valid reason, that's another story altogether. We're not, we're not tyrants. No. But I am very, very strong on this. Somebody, somebody say amen so I know you got amen. that. Amen. Thank you. Or ouch or whatever. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, let's get a let's get a microphone, Sam. I, I just thought you should clarify that we don't go looking for a replacement ourselves. That we no, you we do not. With you. Thank okay. you. A thank you very much. Um, everybody, I am the contact person from here forward. So you need to contact me, and you need to do it as promptly as possible. Um, I work. 40 to 50 hours a week. You can always get me on my cell phone because my job enables me to be in my car quite a bit during the day driving. So I will return your call. For those of you who have emailed me anytime recently since I took over this position, I email you back. It's the right thing to do. It's the professional thing to do. And if I haven't, it was because I just missed it because I'm really funny about things like that. We. Uh, our, my cell number is 
6-8-9-6-6-6-9-3-2-1-6-8-9-6-6-6-9. Okay, you don't need to write it down. Do you know why? Somebody please tell me why you don't need it to write it down. Tell me why else you don't need to write it down. It's on every schedule that's being sent out <laughs> to you. That's true, too. <laughs> and that just told me something. It might not be in your car, Naomi said. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying you have it and you can make it a priority to put it in your phone. And we're making it clear today. Remember, there's amnesty for all the past. <laughs> but I'm making it clear today, this should matter to you enough to put this number in your phone. Everyone here has one. Yeah? yeah. Put yeah. it there. <laughs> yeah. Put it there so that you keep yourself in good, healthy standing. Thank you. I want you all to desire this so much. When I was put on the worship team at Leesburg First Assembly, I could not wait to get started and to get there and to be such a big part of it. And wouldn't you know, I had laryngitis the first Sunday I was supposed to be up there. I cried all day Sunday. <laughs> I was so upset that I wasn't able to be there. That's the way I want you to feel about this ministry, is that it's important to you and that you're going to do your very best. Just like that you would be working for your boss that's paying your paycheck, you're working for a high greater boss than that. Somebody that's given you gift that you can't replace. I want you to, to eat, sleep, and breathe it with me. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that since I've been here at the church. I wasn't a leader at that point. It was important to me. I wanted to give it my best. Okay. Commitment. You will, you will receive a request by email by the 10th of January, March, May, July, September, and November requesting your availability for the next two months. You will be asked to respond to the email within seven days with your availability. Please underline the next line. If no response is received, you will not, underline the word not, be placed on the schedule for the next two months. For real, real. And that is for real. We're all adults. We all know what's our responsibility is and if it's that important to you to be on the team you will answer my email pause yes who does not have an email here you get my point right if your email is not working for you I, I'm eliminating possibilities here. of course and that's true some emails reject <laughs> group emailings did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Some emails reject it. Go get a Gmail account. It's not, you don't have to pay for it. What is a Gmail account? It's a Google email account. It's free. And go get it just for this purpose. It will keep you in a good, healthy place. Yes. I have Gmail. And you don't get it sometimes? Yeah, it comes comes in on spam. Oh, it comes, well, you, okay. Get your Gmail account, go to your, your settings, and make sure you make an exception in your settings for Karen's email, which is? Uh, new li NLC Worship One at New, uh, at new Life, new life dot org. Org. So you can do it. If you don't know how to do this, if it's overwhelming to you, come to me. I will show you. We'll set it up together. I'll get you set up. I guarantee you, you will get Karen's email. Okay. How often do you check your email? Good for you. Mine, first I had a, a hot mail, and it didn't work. You told me to change the Gmail. I made the Gmail, and I didn't, it didn't work. I, didn't, I don't receive them. We, okay, we need to make that exception that we're talking about in your email account. We'll figure it out together. Don't just leave it undone. Check your email. Uh, now, I, I can't make you check your email daily, no. but yeah, I can make you check it every week if you want to be on this team, and I will. If you, if you bring the excuse to me that I didn't get the email after today, 
there will not be an excuse because you didn't come and say, let's work it out. I'm offering to you, give you my time, which is very, very at a premium, because I want you to be connected. I don't want you to be missing these things. It is, an, is a great act of disrespect to, number one, know that you're going to be receiving these emails for this high ministry that you value for the ultimate boss, and you tell me you didn't check email. That's an act of disrespect towards this ministry. Don't give me that reason. Check it. Once a week at least. On what day of the week? Thank you. Tuesday. Microphone, please. Just for clarification, Karen, when we get the availability from you, we, you want us to respond even if every date is fine. I, I'm I available every day. Because yes. in the past, that we didn't have to do that. Yeah. I so want you to respond. Just, just to clarify. That shows me you got the email, okay. too. Okay. And, and, and it's the right thing to do. We should be responding to emails and phone calls. It's just honor. That's just honor. Yes. Um, okay. When we receive it and we decline, it goes to you goes to and you receive the, the explanation. It is my job to find a replacement for you. Do not call somebody to replace you. It is my job to do that. So when you decline it, I get a notification. I get a notification when you decline it or accept it. When I send out a group email to you guys, I can tell which one of you haven't even opened it. I have a report. I can tell when you've opened it. How many times you've opened it. And how many times you've opened it. We use a, a MailChimp, and it's a universally accepted mail provider. It will not be rejected, um, and, it, and it gives us a, a chart of, of openings and all that sort of thing. Right. Well, here's, another, here's another thing, just for clarification. Is everybody awake, just checking? On the, on the Gmail, there are three tabs called Primary, Social, and Promotion. It comes through on Promotion, on the Promotion tab. Okay. I check all of mine. That's how come I always I don't miss them that way. When you are accepting and going to the planning center, because we discovered this, Karen said, didn't you accept? And I said, yes, I did. Because I try to do that diligently as soon as they come out. But when you hit the accept button in your email and it goes to the planning center automatically, apparently what I did, and I didn't realize this, the planning center was being real slow about loading. And I was busy. And I said, okay, I've already hit the accept button and I just clicked it off and I left. It didn't come through as accepted. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something as, you go ahead and talk and okay. I will show it okay. on the screen. Turn on the screen for me, please, Larry. Oh, you have another question, okay. <coughs> Do you receive an accept um, notification if we accept from planning center. So as long as like the c the reason I ask is because I sometimes because I'm like I'm on planning center to make services in myself sometimes you know like one of the things I typically do is I have I just hit planning center instead of going into my email which is like my email is three screens and planning center is two screens so that's what I usually do um, but you get that right. Yeah. Okay, so just so that won't that won't stop it. I see it, and in fact, I look all during the week to see who who's in green and who's in red. <laughs> okay, this Sometimes is my. On uh, go ahead, go ahead. When I accept the invitation, okay, but if I put decline because I, on Saturday I have to work, I cannot come to the the practice. practice. But I still can play on Sunday, or you are gonna replace me too. Um. For the instrumentalists like yourself, Bernardo, and, and each instrumentalist, the answer is going to be different to that because some instruments are more key to the functionality than others. It won't be a mark against you if we say you can't play on Sunday, but we need to know. Uh, so don't feel like we've done something against you by not letting you just play because you couldn't come to the practice. Um, but... Um, if you are allowed to come, which I've done for you, Bernardo, several times, and it's not a problem. I understand your work keeps you. If you come and you play on the team on Sunday, 
assume that you should never start with any song. You should always lag behind and watch what other instrumentalists are doing so you don't come in when you're not supposed to and you don't affect the song that's happening. Yeah. Saying it for everybody for else. Singers, benefit. though, you must be at practice on Saturday because there's just too much going on that we need to make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay, okay. Pastor, go ahead. Everybody look at the screen. This is my, my login to the planning center. I, I will have more things there than you will when you go there because we're, we're administrators of it. So I'm just going to go and add an item to the service tomorrow. And I'm just going to say this is an example item. I'm going to, it's going to take, it's going to take five minutes to give this example item, and uh, now I'm going to accept it. So it shows up here. I'm going to move right up to the top of the service order, right here. It's the first thing. All right. Now, I'm going to go down here to the bottom on the left, look all the way to the left, to the bottom, and I'm going to hit email. And I'm going to send it off to everybody in the team. Okay, I'm sending it to all scheduled people. And you're all going to get this, by the way. All right? See that? I can even be selective and take some of you out if I think you don't need to get it. Email, Leo doesn't have one. <laughs> I'm not going to push that. He's 97 years old. I'm leaving him alone. Okay? Um, so I can tailor it and add stuff in here if I want to, and I say accept. Okay, and 17 e emails are sent off just like that to your emails that we have. So it comes to you. Everybody listening? Uh, it comes to you one way or another. But you need to, if you're not getting it in your primary spot in your email, you need to tell us so we can help you change your email settings so you can get it and respond to it. All right? So um, by way of example, please just stay with me. This is going to take a second. Uh, I'm going to go to my uh, Comcast Net. I figure it's worth walking through this so that uh, there's really no guessing about it anymore. There's a section for notes back in the back of your paper if you need to write anything down that he's showing you. Okay. They're glad to see me back. Did you see that? Um, you can tell I don't check my email in this particular window very often. I have it set up in Outlook. But All right, going to the email here. So here is my invitation right here. I'm just going to hit that invitation, go down here, and I'm going to, well, it's already, this because I've already accepted the service. I, this, this button is going to do the same thing. If I say accept, say the green button is accept, it's, it's, and I hit it, let it take you to the, the whole setup like this. In other words, it takes you to the service. Don't just turn off your computer and walk away from it then, because the whole, going to the service like this, will then tell you, see right here, it shows me that I have been scheduled. And you can confirm it. You can go over to this side and look for your name. So there's Avalon, and she's got a green check mark. Check to make sure that you've been accepted, that, you, that your re response was received. If it's still red, and you know you hit that green button, you need to call Karen right away. D did everybody hear that? I know you did, but I'm, I'm doing that for emphasis. Don't just assume everything's peachy because you hit the button. Make sure it fills in on your computer. Check your name to make sure that you've been accepted and we're good to go. Okay? I would encourage you because you have this. I want you to keep this. I would encourage you. I've given you the months that you will be getting the email for the schedule. Write it on your calendar. Put it in your phone. There's no excuse. It's right here in writing. You, and you will get the planning center like the pastor just showed you on Tuesday. It's like clockwork, so check it. So if you know that Tuesday, oh, I forgot I have to work, and I forgot all about it, you need to let me know immediately so I can find somebody to replace you. Yes, Tammy, hold on just a second. Just, just because I send them out. Yes, please. It's usually by 11 o'clock in the okay. morning, you know, if you let. 
Karen know, you know, that that's way good. You can play. Thank you, Tim. Even if all the songs aren't there, right? Except make sure your name is logged in and make sure you set a point in your mind where I'm going back this week to check it and make sure that I know all the songs that are coming up. Right. Typically, 99% of the time, I will have the songs on there. So. Microphone here for Bernardo, please. Okay. This is my last question. Even if I, I, want to pra I want to come every Sunday, but sometimes I gotta work on Saturday, I accept even though, and then I send an um, um, email telling you, that I cannot come to practice? Yeah, when you hit accept, it gives you an opportunity to write in your email any information. I want to be there. I can't be there on Saturday. Is that okay? Okay. You do have that opportunity to email me. Yes, and that comes, That'll go to Karen, not comes me directly anymore. to me. Comes directly to me. Yay. We need to make sure that all everybody's, there's a place where we tweak it, where it makes sure that the responses all come to you. I, don't I do get them all. You've done that? I get okay. every one okay. of them. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be committed to scheduled ministry dates. Be there and be prepared. You will receive an email. We just went over that every Tuesday for, for Wednesday service and Sunday services through the planning center. And it looks like this. The pastor just walked you through that. Please accept uh, or decline. Review every song and pay attention to any special notes. Pastor and I are starting to work more on getting more annotations in there. Um, on the sheet that you get on Sunday morning, um, there will also be a place where, beside the songs, it'll say PR's annotations or whatever, because we're going to get to this in a minute. Part of what your responsibility is going to be when you get here is to get your iPad set up, and we'll go over that in a second, okay? This is where I want to say something. I've been thinking about it all week. Okay. If you have received a two-month schedule, and we all do in our email, does anybody not know how to open that schedule up and print it? Okay, just checking. So everybody knows how to open up that PDF and print it. You should open it up, print it, and put it somewhere where you see it. Therefore, I assume rightly, and Karen assumes rightly, that you know exactly when you're scheduled in these two months. So there's no excuse even for not getting the email on Tuesday anymore. We hope we want you to get the email. We're going to try and get the email to you. But if you've accepted your place on that schedule, you are responsible for two months' worth of scheduling that took a lot of work to put together. Please... Don't, please don't just rely on the Tuesday. Be mindful of it, but be mindful of your two-month schedule. Thank you, Pastor. That's mm -hmm. very good. Uh, okay. Mark. Oh, yes, microphone. I'm sorry. We got two hands. Okay, up. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. A uh, question in regards to the ministry of flags, flags ministry. Um, when very few, re few times happened that I'm not able to make it, do I have to answer who else are going to be here? Because according with the plan, it's only my name and not the rest of the ladies. But if you could just write a note to me when you decline, Still that let so them and know so is going to be there, that would help us. It, All right. It's very you. important to us as the leaders of the service, me particularly as the pastor, that I have no surprises on the ministry team. No surprises. This would be a rare thing, but I'm going to use it as an example. Perhaps somebody on your team that week got into a bad position in their life and I'm working to restore them. And you didn't know that. And you changed and invited them to be on the team Sunday. And they came, assuming it was okay. That would not be okay at all. So communication is very important. I may not tell you why she can't be on the team or he can't be on the team, but I'll just let you know, let's not put them there this week. I'll do it respectfully. I try to protect everybody's heart and everybody's life. Uh, we have a microphone for Mark. The first thing that I do when I receive the monthly schedule is to go into my cell phone schedule, daily schedule, and depending upon the day, hourly schedules, and I enter them with reminders so that I, hey, we're all hooked to our cell phone, whether it's a dumb phone like mine or a smartphone like yours. If that's a challenge for you, we can help you. But you younger generation, that is a challenge to you guys. You, you, you walk through this stuff like water. Yeah, go ahead. Microphone. You don't want it on the CD? 
I'm going to answer it on the CD. If we have to stop surprising you, are you going to stop surprising me? <laughs> <laughs> no, Touché. I'm not. I'm not going to stop surprising you. But we are going to work very hard to eliminate as many surprises as we can. It's a fair question. Yes. Um, here's the reason that I'm saying no to that. Um, and I don't want to, is not, I'm definitely not using this as a pat answer or a easy out. I'm always wanting to make sure that I'm responsive to what Holy Spirit wants for those services. But it's a fair question. Yes. Okay. So we've talked about accepting. Uh, be sure that you are reviewing and paying attention to each song, any special notes that might be there. Every song should have a uh, YouTube version. You know, go over it and over it and over it. And if, if it's not to. there, let us know. Yes. Is that what you're going to say? Some of the songs that you go on YouTube and click on have been, I don't know. Deactivated, if removed. Deactivated, yes. That's what I just said. If it's yeah. not there for some reason, let us know. It's not, that link is not working. And I'll get a link working right away. That's something I can do just like that from my cell phone, from any device that I'm on. But don't just let it slip by. If you discover that a link is broken, let us know. Email me because I don't always listen to the YouTube. If it's a real familiar song to me, I don't listen to it. One other thing is, and we'll have to let you know, but there, I've noticed a couple where it, it says it's one song and it's a different one. Let us know. Yeah. Same thing. Did you have a comment? Uh, Sylvia, go ahead. Some of the special notes sometimes um, have, have both you and, and Pastor Randy in there, and do we always... In the sheet? No, you will annotations, I meant. In the annotations yeah. on this sheet, always you'll see right you. here, it says, Open Up the Heavens, Annotations PR, Pastor Randy. Okay, I I'll put my, I'm just starting to do this. Okay. And I'll put my name if it's my annotations. That's a good point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's good to see PR there, but don't call me PR, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, and I love abbreviations, but <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, that, that would it, be. There was a wave of that happening years ago. That's why I'm saying it. We effectively killed the wave. <laughs> that would not be respectful anyway, so we shouldn't do it. Um, okay. We just talked about if you're experiencing difficulty in understanding the planning center or something, I'll be happy to meet with you. And if I can't figure it out, we'll go to the pastor. But no, I, I'm pretty familiar with it now. Um, musicians should take extra time to be sure they know the music, the rhythm, the rhythms, and the cording well enough to be supportive in the upcoming practice. Uh, my goal is honestly to get us out and practice by 9.30, if at all possible, 9.45. I know your time is valuable, and if we all come prepared, I think that is a possibility. If you are struggling with a particular song, please contact me, and I'll, I'll help you with it. Oh, we have a, a question. Now, the time is going longer this morning because you have questions. I'm okay with that, but I want you to understand we did have a time frame for you, but I think it's important that you get to ask your questions. Go ahead. I have a question. Um, why were the uh, vocal rehearsals, um, why, why aren't we rehearsing with the voices? Be because they were unfaithfully attended. Okay, which brings me to another p uh, point. Um, when you look at the songs that we're singing, the songs on YouTube, you learn them the way they're sung there, and then sometimes on rehearsals we sing it totally different. The, the notes are different. But at least you rhythms. know the, the words, you, at least you know the gist of the song. There will okay. be differences all the time. Yeah. Okay. Th there will be. That's the uniqueness of who we are. Every congregation sings a song a different way. Do your best to know it, and then you can adjust easier. Is it an option to, to make rehearsals for voices again? No, it's not no. right no. now. No. But not right comment. Now. Oh. No, I know, let's hear it. Uh, that was going to be my comment. Karen and I have talked about this. Okay. And well, let me be softer then. Um, if it happens again, if we reinitiate it again, I expect absolute commitment to be there. That's a lot of work on your part and a lot of work on other people's parts to be there. And, it's, and it really is showing disrespect to everybody on the team that you don't show up and participate. And, and I just want to make it known right now that I vote for it to start again. Okay. I really do. We'll discuss it and get back to you. Yeah. I, it, it, it had value. And we did see a difference starting to happen in the... In the but I, I, I fully expect if we start it again that it's going to be honored. Yeah? We'll have yeah? To, we'll have to talk about that. Yeah? I'm not, I'm not there yet. Yeah? Okay. Okay. 
Okay, if you decline, you will be replaced by another team member. I won't read all through that because we've kind of really gone over that quite a bit. Remember, it's me that you need to contact. Do not replace yourself. Um, absence without notification from a ministry booking that you have been accepted may be grounds for dismissal from the team. Accountability is very important and displays your value for this privilege and opportunity to minister Christ. Very important. Very important. It's a serious offense. Yes, it's a very serious offense. Um, again, if that's not your heart, you might be in the wrong ministry. Okay, all worship event preparation. Be in place and ready to start a minimum of 15 minutes before. I've asked the team tomorrow, as an example, to be here at 10 after because we run a run by a song. Um, if that were to change from 15 minutes before, I would let you know. But 15 minutes before, making sure your iPad is ready and all annotations are uploaded. And you will have the annotations right here on this paper that you will need to, to pull up. That is not somebody else's responsibility. That is yours. Um, okay. Late arrivals detract from the hinder the, and hinder the flow of the spirit and, the, and of worship. Tuning of instruments, connecting sound equipment, arranging sets, and other activities should be completed 15 minutes before service begins. At that point, I will ask you, do not diddle, daddle, doodle, or whatever you do on your instruments. Noodle. Okay, thank you. At that point, it becomes... <laughs> you get around everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my grandkids will tell you I come up with my own words. Please, that's very distractive. Very distractive. Be in tune. Nothing should be going on at quarter after. Nothing except you being getting up there, preparing yourself, and getting ready to enter into the worship, into the Lord. Okay? Any questions about that? All right. Yes. Um, for the piano slash keyboard in general, um, sometimes we start a little bit before we start with doing general music like that. Is that something that we're going to be doing or like is that noodling like I just is that a thing you want as long as you are um, if we don't have a worship t CD on and as long as you want to play five minutes before quietly and softly to Escher I think that's an awesome idea I don't if have you a problem ask. if you ask yeah please ask but that's a difference than the other noise in the sounds I mean yes Backing up just a point, a uh, little bit to clarify something. If the if the pre uh, if the eight o'clock practice comes again for singers only, um, can they use? Can everybody use their own iPad that they will be using? Because many times they can just grab one, and the violin sometimes is in that mix, and I can't set my own things up ahead. Fair request. Yeah, fair request. Fair request. Leave the violin iPad alone. Yeah. Well, you're the one that does that, and it's a fair request. Yeah, and you have a V on the back of yours, so a yellow V. Is I think all the iPads have, or don't they have like a dot with, an, with a letter on but it? But Sylvia's is the only one that matters, truly. Okay. Because she uses the staff, and you have your own, and you already said Well, I know. I've, I think you've got a... Uh, somebody else has got a red dot besides mine for drums, I, I think. I have my own iPad. Oh, okay, somebody, but I've gotten somebody else's... But it doesn't matter because the other iPads are all set up mostly to the cording anyway. Um, okay. But we want to come in and we want to make sure that the microphones are checked as soon as you get here, that we've got sound everybody can hear in their uh, monitors and that type of thing too. So we need to get in here, be in, in place on time and get that done. Because people co start coming early and we don't want that to be a distraction. Okay. Um, a microphone for... Oh, I'm sorry. Then I would also uh, uh, encourage us to set aside a little bit of time or balance because when you start even pre-worship, one of the first things I'm doing is playing with one hand while I'm doing this <laughs> with the other hand, trying to get this one turned up and that one turned down. And yes, balance. And, and if we don't yeah. balance... If That's everybody's in are. place at 15 after, we can do that quickly, as long as there's not a lot of commotion going on up there. And seeing as we're talking about that, I might as well stick this in here. Um, the balance. You're talking about the personal stations, yes. monitoring stations. Which I use right here. Mm -hmm. just yeah. By the way, all of, if you haven't heard this before, each person, you have to go, I understand. 
uh, we, we'll give you the CD. Uh, each station that you have in front of you, that's a $600 piece of equipment. We, I'm not saying that because money is the deal. I'm saying we, we put more into this because we want you to be able to get the sound that you need in front of you. All right? Be careful with it, but use it. You can't break it just by pushing buttons. And I'm also giving you heads up. Everybody listening? I need everybody listening. Heads up. All of the speakers are going to go away. All of them. All of them, eventually. Eventually is not too far away. I've been given permission by the church council to start investing money in exploring for the right kind of hearing devices, earbuds, direct hearing plugged into your listening station so that we lose the ambient, the messy noise on the platform that's causing feedback and causing all kinds of distress. Get used to the idea, get comfortable with it. Please keep in mind because I just learned this. Okay, God bless you. We'll get you the CD. I, I just learned this with our little choir. If you have a group up there singing and they have a CD as the accompaniment, mm -hmm. the only way they can hear it is through speakers. Is through those speakers that are up there because yeah. here... That's a fair thing and we'll yeah. leave, leave that wedge one here for that purpose alone. Okay, thank you. That's a very fair assessment. All of this, we're, we're going to be reasonable about it, but I'm, I'm giving you the directions so you won't be surprised about it. Uh, it's going to cost us many, many thousands of dollars to do this, but that's how serious we are about getting control over what's happening when that sound. Okay. Several of you either are on a dance ministry or you're on a solo schedule or a trio or whatever. I need to see and hear your, your song two weeks prior, at least two weeks prior. The only thing that I think that would prevent that and me hearing it a week before would be if you tell me that you had to work and you didn't have another, another Saturday to get to me. Otherwise, you'll be move to another schedule because I need to hear it two weeks prior, okay? I need you to be thinking about this. If you don't want to be on the solo schedule, please let me know because you should have a, a song in your heart. You should be asking God, what do you want me to minister? It's not about you getting up here and singing a song. It's about ministry. It's about touching the heart of God through your ministry. So you need to be thinking about that. You need to be not at the last minute. I don't know what we're going to sing. Or what and I'm don't blame sing. the Holy Spirit for it. If you and don't, don't blame know. the Holy Spirit for that. You're not honoring the position that you've been given. Holy Spirit can work two weeks in advance. He's good like that. Yeah. And he might change your mind. That's okay if he changes your mind. But he's the one that's changed your mind. For the dancing? For the dancing? Uh, should I bring a CD or can, you, can they use YouTube? Because I think that can, can they use YouTube if they're going to dance, or should she have a CD for the dance? I don't know the technology of that. It depends on the song and what's happening on the YouTube clip. Um, That's true. So it's better know, to it, probably it, have. We, those are things we work at individually. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and there's no reason it can't be used if it's clear and it's got everything that's necessary is my general answer to that. Um, I, I want to, if you will please make me a copy of your song, the words to your song, and get those to me. Um, but oh, go ahead. Seeing as you said that, don't assume that we, we will just bring up the live YouTube clip because as you've seen, they all come with an, an advertisement. advertisement. It could be an advertisement for women's underwear in the middle of our, our church service. <laughs> we have to download that YouTube clip. Yeah. Well, we need to download it. And what I'm saying is get it to us ahead of time so that we can download the clip itself and we're not at the mercy of the internets. You see, we want to have total control over what's being presented to the people here. Okay, so on page four, we want to make sure we get the sound levels and the microphone tested and that type of thing. Titles, words, and music for special ministry must be submitted to the worship leader. A, min a minimum of one week prior to your ministry date, but you need to bring your words with you when you come two weeks prior, okay? So that we can just make sure everything's okay with that. We've talked a, um, a lot about our attitude and our countenance, and the pastor kind of hit that earlier. Um, we certainly, it's important. The Holy Spirit 
shows us every service. I can't think of a service he hasn't done this, that he shows us things. He shows us people that are hurting. He shows us things that are going on, maybe not to the specific but what we do is important. And if you're standing up there with a sad, a sad face or um, you don't act like you even care about being up there, you're not even looking out and engaging in anything, what encouragement is that, really? So you really need to be engaged. You need to be clapping, smiling, worshiping, and not just standing up there, okay? It's very important. Um, Somebody said that earlier. You know, you leave like a, dis a different person because you've been in that atmosphere. And so somebody coming in here and they had no hope when they walked in the door. And suddenly the change in at atmosphere changed them. You see? So important. can't tell you how important that is. Yes. Um, especially for me. That's a question. When I'm in the presence of the Lord and I, and I start, I don't even know sometimes for me. So it brings times that I need to kneel, kneel down or, or I just laugh or think. Mm -hmm. So I don't know because I get, I lose my mind in that, in that moment. I will answer that. When you're on the worship team, get it under control. Worshiping down here, you're free. On the worship team, you're not. And you do have the right. It's a misunderstanding, and I, your question is fair. It's a misunderstanding, and here's a theological point. The Holy Spirit does not possess us like a demon who, who manipulates, controls, and we have no say. We always have say. We always have the freedom to respond in a way that the moment dictates. And when you're up there, uh, you need to not draw attention to yourself. Honor and order. It's all about not drawing attention to yourself. Now, if Holy Spirit moves in and puts us all on our face up there, that's another story. Right. He can do that, and, he, and I'm, I welcome him. But that will, be the, uh, th that will be the exception to what happens. Holy Spirit rarely sweeps in a way that you didn't even see it coming. Holy Spirit works with us and moves us and stirs us. And if you feel like you're being stirred in such a way that you don't really want to surrender to, to the, the need to be up there and be in control... Come to, come to one of us politely say, can I get off the platform? We'll say, go ahead. And that will not be a mark against you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fair enough? Uh, ministry teams do what they do to bring attention to God. A lack of unity will always be serious compromise to that goal. So this is under sp spiritual unity. We must remain what has the Holy Spirit been telling me since November. We must become one. And that causes, and we have to do that through unity. Okay? We've talked about dressing appropriately. Uh, maintain a, a constant awareness of your role in ministry. Stay focused on the service leader. Uh, I have to stay focused on the pastor because the Holy Spirit might be moving him in a totally different direction. Do I get my feelings hurt? Absolutely not. He knows that he can change a song. He can change the whole service. And I'm okay with that. And I truly am, because I want what the Holy Spirit wants. Well, because you also don't make it about you. No, I don't make it about me. So, okay. Um, avoid drawing attention. The pastor's gone over that. Do not leave the platform until the pastor of the service invites you to do so. Be attentive and be ready for the pastor to recall you to the ministry. Please, and this is the next page. We don't expect, we know that you might need to go get something to drink, go to the men's or ladies' rooms. We understand that. We're all here a very long day if we're on the team that Sunday. You must stay in one full service. How could you possibly not? You can go out in between. Please be back in this building by 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock in the sanctuary ready to, and if you've gone out, ready to come down the two side, the far side aisles together. I was here one Sunday morning. I wasn't leading, and I saw everybody coming up in all different times, and it was distracting Very to what the pastor was doing that day. a critical moment of the service. It was, and it, and it was just, it wasn't order. It, it just wasn't. Come and very, very distractive. You must come up together and to the outer lines. To the outer lines. Did you have something, Sylvia? Um, I have to 
10 o'clock. Um, um, Pastor Randy always goes beyond 10, but sometimes when Pastor Hope preaches, it's a little bit shorter and some See of us See what get, you do? Some, <laughs> a few of us get caught in Sunday school and, and don't get here. We understand that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she, she actually has That's been. a different matter altogether yeah. than out sipping coffee in a back room. And that's the other thing. So when you go out, Uh, no, you, you can, but if there's two or three of you come up together. Right. We're saying use the least amount of distraction as possible. Right. Yeah. If oh, you, you go, can. Oh, you can. And if you go out and you're having coffee, please do not congregate in the foyer out there. Please go into one of the back rooms. Don't okay. stay in the lobby. Do not stay in the lobby. Mark, you have a comment? Just the fact that I sit up here primarily when uh, when the seat's available, do you want me no, to? I would no, it's I not. My gentle answer uh, is learn to sit closer to the sides. Sorry to mess with your favorite spot. I, I'm, I'm yeah. Well, okay. Uh, you need to find a spot that's less conspicuous. Then there's there's a lot of other places. The point is, it is a. I have worked sometimes 20 hours on a message for that one moment when I'm inviting people to respond. If the enemy could, he would use a well-intentioned, entirely wholesome man like you to distract from that call. You understand what I'm saying, Mark? Okay, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that works. Try it. Fair enough? You have the microphone? I have a question about um, when we're in the front like this, eh? So, like, you know, sometimes, like, you sit, you're in the front there. Okay, same thing. So Wait for them to be there and join them. Okay. Same thing. We'll see how that works. I was just wondering, <coughs> should we, the worship team, just sit in a totally different spot? Like, all of us sit in the back or all of and see how that works. I really don't want you all to sit in back. Okay. That, that, that posture eliminates you, and you are key people. Yeah. You are key people in terms of people following you and responding to you. Right. Now, if you have a, uh, a physical problem that says you need to be back there and you need to be able to come in and out, I'm, I'm understanding with that. Really, I am. Right. Don't even worry about that. But people... Follow us. So even when you're worshiping and by sitting there and listening to the, the, the word and you say amen or praise the Lord, right. if it's genuine, you are leading in a good purpose. Right. Or in the front. Or, or maybe if we should start sitting as a group. Well, I don't want to do that because you okay. may have guests one day. You may right. have, you know, right. just it's try just to sit thought. in a way in a place that's least conspicuous if you're okay. on deck that day. I okay. mean, you sit here all the time. Right. That's okay. But now if you're on deck, if you're up for that day, maybe find a spot that's easier and less conspicuous right. in terms of moving up. Okay. Um, Don, he's already left, but Don is just always so kind and a, such a servant heart to take our iPads back for us, but it really is your responsibility. Everybody is responsible to put their iPad back in, make sure that it's solidly in the plug because sometimes they don't charge all the way. We're not getting them in. Making sure that you are cleaning up your own mess back there. If we have communion, take your communion cups. If you've had a Kleenex, take your Kleenex, those types of things. So make sure those are clean. Um, and then the last thing is ability to check emails. You must have the ability and the commitment to check emails. Um, okay. Anything else before I go to the next thing? Uh, what's the next thing? I'm um, check your agenda here. I've got two more things and then we'll be done. I really felt like the Lord said, um, I kept asking, oh, my agenda's buried somewhere. I kept asking the Lord, how can, what are some steps we can take becoming one? We are going to start not taking the place of, we are going to start, a lamb well, will you pass these out, please? A worship team prayer and praise chain, if you will. Hope has um, agreed to be the contact person for this. Um, we will share with Eleanor and Ernie, who is the primary prayer chain in the church, if somebody's in the hospital, that type of thing. 
but it'll be a, a time for us as a group of worshipers, if we're going through a hard time, that we can all begin to pray for each other and to stand on the word of God for each other. And since Pastor Hope is in the building, uh, I'm pleased to see that. I would like for you to just come up and briefly share what you shared with me the other day because Pastor Hope kind of oversees all of the prayer that goes on in the church, and I think it's very important that we hear your heart. Now, the Hope that's the contact person is Hope Stead Nikki. Just make that clear because that could be confusing. Um, we were talking about the fact that a, a prayer chain can very easily set people up to be a gossip chain. People who are not wanting to be gossips can be easily slide into it if they're hearing uh, information. So um, they can be curious and care about and then you hear one thing and you hear something else and it gets out of hand. And uh, Karen's heart is for it to be a team of people who care about each other and community and it's wonderful. So I've, um, uh, Karen and I have agreed that what's going to happen is if you have a prayer request and you let Hope Stead Nikki know about it, for instance, you're, you have a sickness, then Hope Stead Nikki will, you can give her the details if you want to. You don't need to, but you can give details if you want to. But Hope Stead Nikki will then send out an email which will not have the details, but it will have a scripture for everybody to agree on. So she may send out an email to all of us saying, um, Pastor Troy is having uh, some struggles with his uh, body or however she wants to phrase it. And we're going to agree together in Jesus' name on this scripture. So Hope will beforehand will be prepared with uh, scriptures that we can agree on in, in healing, prosperity, all different uh, topics. And Hope will have scriptures already in place so that when she receives that from you she'll be led by the Holy Spirit and say this is the scripture that I know we can all agree on for and um, the faith in the word of God will we will see the results and the people will be healed or the needs will be met but we don't need to know the details we don't need things to be spread around so if you ask hope oh what's wrong Hope will say, we're not going to go into the details. It will not be personal against you that she's not telling you the details. It's that we are being very guarded, very, very careful that this doesn't become a gossip line. And no one wants it to become that. But if we don't on purpose stop it from becoming that, by default, that's exactly what Satan will have happening. So you can uh, trust Hope not to tell anyone else the details, tell her as much details or not. She doesn't care to know all the details. But if you're struggling with something, we can all agree together on the same scripture. And we can have great faith that it will happen when we're united together on the scripture. Then later there will be an opportunity for you to give a praise report. And uh, she'll send that out to everybody as well. No more questions at this point. We're going to try to get you out of here yeah, fast. Yeah, I'm sorry if it's taken so long, but it's been good. I mean, I think we've answered a lot of questions. I have two more things. Lamwell is going to pass you out two things. One of them is a questionnaire that I need everybody to fill out. Uh, I'm trying to update the planning center with all your information as far as email address to make sure I have your right phone number and that type of thing. And then the last thing I'm going to let the pastor lead us on. Um, Lamwell, did you have the acknowledgments there? Okay, thank you. Um, now, Pastor, we are going to do our worship team uh, covenant. So you can go ahead while I'm helping pass these. I'll take one. Okay. Thank you for being very patient and staying today. I understand some of you had to leave. Thank you. I know it's a real commitment on your part. I know you've listened to a lot of information. Now is the time you need to listen the most. So don't start filling out your information sheets. I need every eye up and looking at me. Do you remember when we started this? I made a comment. I said, I hope that every one of you remain part of this team. It's my desire. I see the, I see the, what, the value in each one of your lives and your giftings. It is my desire that this, ra this raises your enthusiasm and your commitment level even higher. It's raising mine. Um, I would rather that you said, 
I really don't think I can live up to these expectations and signed off. In other words, you didn't, you didn't make this covenant. Then that you made this covenant and really didn't mean that you would do everything in your possibility to honor the things that we're calling you to. Does that make sense? I will not look at you in a bad light at all. You will not be blacklisted in my world if you say, honestly, I don't think I can do this. And you opt out of your position in worship. But I would rather that all of you stayed. I think what God has put together here is beautiful and powerful. God uses it for his glory, and I want to keep all of you from the youngest members, for those of you in the youth worship team, you play such an important spiritual role in what you do, and it's valuable. And you are par you're participating. I would like more and more to be using you in our mainstream teams, not just when the youth do a service. If it's in your heart, if you have the ability to, let Karen know. We'll begin to integrate you. You are valuable members of our team. So from the oldest to the youngest, I say to you, I love you. Care so much about your life and your commitments you've made to worship. And I want to enhance it. I want to pastor it. I want to strengthen it. I want to be there to help you with it. But you do have to make a decision today. This is not news. This is stuff, stuff that's been in our hearts for a long, long time. So before you leave today, you sign this. And if you're not signing it, just please come to Karen or myself and let us know. I said there's no condemnation. There isn't. I'll be sad that you won't be on the team, but you won't be blacklisted. But there's no in-betweens. You sign it or you step off today. And we're moving higher and further for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Uh, you can fill out your information sheets after, preferably before you leave the building today. Please do it before you leave the building today. And, uh, but your covenant, signing your covenant is, is now or not. And um, just take a moment to take do that. Take a moment to do that. And when you're done, if you'll pass, just turn it upside down and pass it to the end dial so Lamwell can pick them up for us. That'd be awesome. Sign your covenant now sign your if covenant you're going now. to. Yes. If um, you're not signing it, just hand it in with the rest seventh. of them in a minute. Well, you can, you can get each of your team members to sign the same covenant. We'll have the CDs available for them to watch. I'll give you some extra ones. You oh. sign for yourself. They sign for themselves. I, I, if you can fill out the information sheet for after. me today, after. After, we, we're, we're, we're going to pray, to, we're gonna pray together and release you, and then you can fill out your information sheets, okay? But sign your covenant sheets now if you're going to. And pass them all to this end of the aisle when you're done. Turn them upside down and send them over to the end. Okay, pass them to this end if you have it signed. If there's a clog in the pipe, I understand. Somebody's still signing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have anything else to say? Um. No, when you're filling out, everybody, if you, when you're filling out your information sheet, um, one of the things that I thought might be nice, but I, if it's not anything anybody wants to do, that's fine. I didn't put it on there. Just mark down at the bottom if you would like to see us have a cookout as a group. Just put yes cookout or no cookout, okay? And go ahead, Pastor. All right. Has everybody passed your sheets, whether you've signed them or not? If you've signed one, that's fine. Just get one to take home with you. We want you to have a copy of that. Yeah, I have extra ones up here. Oh, okay. Keep your back page and sign another one then. I've got some more. Let Pastor close in prayer and then we'll go. Whoever needs I'll, I'll one. I'll give you a moment. Some of you need to sign over again. <laughs> Thank you so much again for committing to be here today. Can you, can, do, you, do you see how important today is? Huh? I know a lot of you are affirming that. I just, it matters so much to me that this is not just some sort of legalistic thing. It, that would be the worst understanding of this, that we were getting legalistic. I, I loathe legalism, but I love clarity. Clarity. This is what is needed to do this with honor.
So it's clarity that we're aiming for. Okay. You still waiting some? Okay. Oh, no. I'm, I, you're, you're filling up the other one. I'm, we're, I'm talking about oh, these. Okay. These. I'm only interested in these right now. <laughs> you're supposed to be filling up the other one after we're done. <laughs> after we're done. All the, are they all handed in now? All of these. Everyone look at me. Everyone look at me. All these handed in? Yes? Okay. Stand with me, please. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever trust and serve Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Lord, now I pray for each member of this team, this ministry group, and I speak blessing over them, whichever direction they're going today. Uh, Lord, enhance everything that You put in us for Your glory. And may You increase as we decrease. Strengthen us knit us together, and ultimately, Lord, everything that we do, whether it's a dial at the back of the room or an instrument or a vocal thing or a dance thing, I pray that you will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. No.